you solve x add 5 is equal to 11. So when we're solving equations, we need to remember that what we do to one side, we do to the other. I find it helpful to put a dotted line where the equals is to show the two sides of your equation. Now on the left hand side, we've got x add 5 equals 11. Now we don't want x add 5 to solve an equation means we just want the x on its own. So what do I need to do? I need to get rid of the plus 5. Now to do that we're going to do the opposite and that's going to be to take 5 away from both sides. So on the left I'm just left with x and on the right I now have 6. x equals 6 would be the solution to that one. For question number two, again, I'm going to do my dotted line. And what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. On the left, I've got two lots of x. But to solve an equation, I just want that variable, that letter x, on its own. So to do that, I'm going to divide this side by two. That's the opposite of timesing by two. And I also need to divide this side by two. So x equals six. That's the solution to that one. Question number two, solve x minus nine is equal to ten. Now, again, I'm going to do that dotted line in the middle. And what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So to get rid of minus 9, we need to do the opposite, which would be to add 9. And adding 9 to the left gets me just x on its own, which is what we want. And on the right, we've got 19. x equals 19 would be your solution. Okay, part B, and we've got x is being divided by 5, and that equals 10. Remember, the line in a fraction also means divide. So if they're dividing by 5, we need to get rid of that. And to get rid of that, we're going to do the opposite, which is timesing by 5. So I'm going to times the left-hand side by 5, and that just gives me x. But if I times that side by 5, I've also got to times this side by 5, and so that is 50. x equals 50 is the answer to that one. Okay, question number 3, and now we've got a two-part equation. This is two parts because we've got two things to undo. First, x is being multiplied by 3. And then we're taking away two. So we've got two things to undo and we always go in reverse order. So if the last thing that happened was that we took away the two, we're going to undo that bit first. The opposite of subtracting two is to add two. If I add two to that side, I've also got to add two to this side. I'm now just left with the three X because this plus two has got rid of the minus two and that equals 15. If three lots of X is 15, there's a multiplication happening here. We're going to do the inverse and we're going to divide both sides by three. And that gives us just x on its own, which is what we wanted, equals 5. So x equals 5 would be your solution. Question number 4, and we're solving 8y is equal to 56. Now this means 8 lots of y, 8 multiplied by y. So we're going to do the opposite, and we're going to divide both sides by 8. So y equals 7 would be the solution to that one. Part b, I've got 3m add 1 equals 10, another 2 um, step equation. We're going to start by taking 1 away from both sides because we know the plus 1 was the last thing to happen if we were doing it going forward. So we're going to take 1 away from both sides and that leaves me with 3m equals 9. If 3 lots of m is 9 then I now need to divide by 3 to find out that m equals 3. Great, question 5. Solve 4 take away t equals 12. Now again, I'm going to take the 4 away from both sides. What we do to one side, we do to the other, and I'm trying to get that t on its own. I've then got minus t equals 8. Now with an equation, if you end up with minus the letter equals whatever, we can just times by minus 1 or divide by minus 1, and it makes sense to think about it. If minus t is 8, then t must be minus 8. So you can think of that as dividing both sides by minus 1 or timesing both sides by minus 1. But ultimately, if minus t is 8, then t would be equal to minus 8. Quite a tricky one, that. t equals minus 8. And part 2, we've got a two-step equation. And what I'm going to do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. So first, we're going to take 3 away. And that leaves me with 2h equals 15. And then if I've got two lots of h is 15, I then want to divide by 2. And that leaves me with h equals, now you can either write 15 divided by 2 and leave it as a fraction, that's absolutely fine, or you can say it's 7.5. Either of those is correct, whatever you want to write on the answer line, as long as you've done that last step and you've shown that you need to divide it by 2. Okay, question 6. I'm going to expand the bracket here, so 2 lots of x and 2 lots of 5, and we're going to write 2x add 10 is equal to 15 that dotted line in. And what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So I'm going to take 10 away from both sides. 2x equals 5. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. 
x equals, and again, we could write 5 over 2 if we wanted. We're dividing by the 2, so that goes on the bottom. Or we can say that it's 2.5. So x equals 2.5. And the same thing here, we're going to expand this bracket. 9 lots of x and 9 lots of minus 2. So 9x minus 18 equals 45. Dotted line. What we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So I'm going to add the 18 to get rid of it. 9x equals 63. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 9. And we know that 63 divided by 9 x equals 7. Okay, question 7. I've got t add t add t add t equals 20. So I can say that 4 lots of t equals 20. And to solve that, we're going to divide both sides by 4. So t would equal 5. Makes sense. 5 add 5 add 5 add 5 does equal 20. So t equals 5 is our answer. Part B, we're going to do our dotted line again. And what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So I'm going to minus 17 from both sides. 3B is equal to 13. Now 3, I can't divide 13 by 3. So I'm going to write B equals, I want to divide both sides by 3. If it doesn't go in, we've seen that we can put it on the bottom of a fraction. So I'm going to leave my answer to this one as 13 over 3. That is 4 holes because 3 goes into 13 4 whole times with 1 left over out of 3. But either of those answers would be absolutely fine. I'm going to put 13 over 3 for that one. Okay, question 8. Solve 3.5x equals 14. Now what I need to do here is divide both sides by 3.5. So I'm dividing this side by 3.5, and, and I'm dividing this side by 3.5. And, and we're asking how many 3.5s go into 14. So if you like, we could write 3.5 add another 3.5, that makes 7, and then 7, add 3.5, that makes 10.5, and then 10.5, um, add 3.5, that makes 14. So we can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4 that fit in. So x is going to be equal to 4 in that case. And part b, let's put it on the answer line, part b, solve this equation. So again, what we do to one side, we do to the other. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. 9f equals 18, and then divide both sides by 9, f equals 2. Hopefully you're getting the hang of these now. Question number 9, and again we've got another bracket that I'm going to expand. So 3 lots of x, and 3 lots of 4, so 3x minus 12 equals 15. Let's do that dotted line. Add 12 to both sides to get rid of the minus 12. So 3x equals 27, and then divide by 3. All about what you do to one side, you're doing to the other. As long as you're doing that, you're not going to go too far wrong. And then the same thing here, we're going to expand this bracket out. 2x minus 18 equals 3. I'm going to add 18 to both sides to get rid of the minus 18. So 2x is 21. And then I need to divide both sides by 2. I didn't do my dotted line. There you go. And that is x equals 10.5. Question number 10, and now we've got x's on both sides of the equation. So when I have x's on both sides of the equation, my advice would be, you don't have to, but my advice would be to get rid of the smaller number of x's first. So I'm going to take 3x away from both sides because that is the smaller number of x's. And then I'm left with 12 on the left. And on this side, the 3x is going to come off of this 5x. So 5x take away 3x is 2x minus 4. And now that's my equation. At that point, I know I need to add 4 to both sides to get rid of the minus 4. And 16 equals 2x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So 8 equals x, or x equals 8. You can just flip it around. That's absolutely fine. OK, question 11. And again, I'm going to get rid of my smaller number of x's first because I've got x's on both sides. So I'm going to take 2x away from both sides. And that means that 5x minus 5 equals 10. I'm now going to add 5. So 5x equals 15. And dividing by 5, we get x equals 3. Fabulous. Okay, question number 12. It's the last question on the paper. We've got two equations here to solve. So this one. Now t minus 7 is all being divided by 2. So this big line here means that it's all being divided by 2. So I can't add 7 
because the 7 is also being divided by 2. The first thing I need to do to both sides is get rid of this fraction. Now the fraction means that it's being divided by 2, so we need to do the opposite and we need to times both sides by 2. That leaves us with t minus 7 equals 6. Now we wouldn't times the top of the fraction, we would leave that as it is, because by getting rid of the dividing by 2, we are timesing by 2, so we don't need to times the top as well. And then we're going to add 7 to both sides, t equals 13. And last but not least, I've got 22 minus 3x equals 8x. Now, because I've got numbers here, constant terms, I've got a variable x here and a variable x here, I'm actually going to look to get rid of this term, because then I'm going to have x's on one side and numbers on the other, and that's going to make my life easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 3x to both sides. I'm adding it to get rid of the minus 3x. Now that just leaves me with 22 on the left hand side, and that equals 11x on the right hand side. And then I've got 11 lots of x, but I just want to know what x is. So I'm going to divide this side by 11, divide this side by 11, and 2 equals x. So x equals 2. Hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do something else.